today I'm speaking to Gabby Brown, who was one of uh, several members of local residence groups, uh, which gave evidence to the New South Wales parliamentary inquiry into the Western Harbour Tunnel last week. Welcome, Gabby. And um, first of all, what were the main concerns that you uh, took on behalf of Roselle against West Connex members? So our main concerns were, I mean, it was, we spread it across a variety of topics, but one of them was the concern about construction noise and pollution, about um, damage to housing, specifically the pollution from the tunnels, like saying that we would definitely desire that they um, would be filtered and that the stacks be filtered, or at the very least that there's a pollution monitor um, put next to the stacks. Um, also the concern of dredging up in the harbour, how much pollution that's going to release, especially to, you know, the pu public open swimming pools like Dawn Fraser, um, the lack of a like actual appropriate business case, the fact that they never provided us with any public transport alternatives. Um, there's heaps of reasons. Like we couldn't, of course, raise everything in the meeting. We were more intent on each of us. Like I focused on pollution and the concern over PM 2.5 diesel carcinogenic pollution being released up into the air. Um, whereas Bill Holiday, another member of RAW, focused more on how um, you know, the public transport alternative is obviously so much more effective and um, the fact that we never even, cons they never even considered that for us. Um, and uh, obviously the risk of building a tunnel under the harbour, such a big project like that, there are like, you know, concerns that come with that as well. And Ben Prague from Roselle PNC drove home the point of why we don't want the, um, the old West Tigers Club on Victoria Road to be turned into a dive site, how Victoria Road is already an incredibly polluting road and there's Rosa Public School right next to it, you know, completely exposed. And now that they want to consider building this huge smokestack right next to it as well, it was, you know, even more offensive. So uh, we went into that as well. Those were um, our main topics that we brought up in the meeting. Um, but in submission, we had heaps of other points like, yeah, of course, construction noise. Uh, we wanted confirmation that building this new Western Harbour Tunnel will not delay the delivery of the Roselle Rail Yard's, you know, public park that they're going to build down at the bottom of Roselle. That was their big green eco fun promise for us. Um, and we don't know whether this now new stage four is going to delay that. Um, and yeah, and just the fact that it was all the whole idea that it's best practice and that this is what is best for us is obviously um, not true um, and that they cannot really provide evidence that it is uh, evidence that actually stands up. So, um, yeah, those were our main. Now, it's, um, as many of uh, raw members have actually already gone through the pain of construction of the uh, in, in, in West Connect's. Uh, which which connects to the to the Western Harbour Tunnel project. Uh, were you able to relay any of the those experiences? Yeah, I mean, I, I couldn't speak as if I was reading an anecdotal piece of evidence from a person, but like saying I said the fact that I you know have been the Facebook admin for Raw for the past what like two at least two three years. I think we started in around twenty eighteen. Um, I definitely have residents like just messaging me personally on Facebook and saying, look, I can't sleep at night. I'm so frustrated. I'm so tired. They will give me headphones, but I can still hear it till three in the morning. They, you know, they were even trying to move people to like little motels for the night, which you couldn't do during COVID. So people were just trapped in their house. Um, and I think I got people getting especially frustrated by then. Um, and yeah, they did ask us in the, in the inquiry, you know, like, have you felt the cumulative impact or have residents and all of you felt the cumulative impact of both stage three and stage four? And I've answered, yeah, we absolutely have. Um, it's been such a long time and residents are very tired. A lot of people have moved out um, of an area that they've been living in like their whole life. Um, that's a big move for a lot of people to make. And um, yeah, mostly people are incredibly uh, frustrated and suffering, you know, mentally from the noise and the impacts. Literally days after, after the the inquiry heard your evidence, they uh, the government announced that they had sold <laughs> off the remaining share of of Westconnex, yeah, mainly to Transurban or Transurban led 
um, partnership. Um, mm. How does um, did the issue of 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 the I guess the shonky economics of this whole kind of tunneling road toll projects come out in uh, in in any of the discussion in front of the inquiry? Not really, and I wish it had been. I mean, we did, I think it was excellent. I can't remember off the top of my head how we got to this point, but Ben Pryor from Rose LPNC did bring up the fact that, you know, Shane Mallard from the Liberals was arguing that, um, you know, like when we go into these projects, we are taking a risk. Um, there's a risk to these private companies um, when they like buy into a project like this and of course that is a complete lie and Ben Prague brought that up and said no actually like when we go into these projects the, the taxpayer is always going to foot the bill because if they this private company who will now owns a hundred percent of West Connects which yeah was especially hurtful to experience like literal days after this inquiry where we're supposed to be voicing our concerns and actually being heard um then it's almost as if it was a joke that they went straight into <laughs> like showing off that they'd sold the entire project to Transurban because we did kind of bring up um, the fact that economically it's not a risk at all and that as taxpayers, yeah, we always pay the bill if the company does not make the profit that they desired off of these roads. Um, so we didn't, like no members asked us a specific question about the economics of the project and if it was viol viable, but that topic did get brought up and um, you know, the Liberal member, he just said, well, we'll have to agree to disagree on that. Well, another elephant in the room, if you like, is um, is climate change. Yeah, like at the end of the speech, I just said, like, in the context of climate change, this is so glaringly offensive and so ill-educated to, to be putting something forward like this. Like, we've known about the science of climate change since, like, at least since the 1980s when it's been seriously investigated and you know, and they, they, the Liberals went into this saying, oh, well, we have more public transport infrastructure than any other Liberal government in history. And I was like, that's true, but that doesn't excuse what you're doing. Um, and we didn't go into depth on that in this particular inquiry, but um, I did bring it up in my opening statement. Um, and, and yeah, it, it would have been a good one to bring up because it does put everything into very, very, very serious context. Um, you know, we're not just a bunch of residents who are upset about losing our houses and like that very not in my backyard NIMBY attitude. It was more um, we're incredibly concerned about the livability of our planet and of our children's health and future. You know, like that's that's the real concern for us. Um, so, yeah, it was definitely the elephant in the room. We didn't address it in particular. Um, would have been nice to. Have you got any plans to, I mean, do you work together with the other groups like the the, uh, that have got organised specifically around the Western Harbour Tunnel? Yeah, there hasn't been, like, for the past couple of months, I think, especially because of lockdown, like, the fact that we know that not much is possible. I mean, we've all been preparing our submissions for a while, um, you know, since, like, April, May, June, and we've been going back and forth and preparing that, and that was the main goal, I think, was to get to this inquiry and have things prepared. Um, and after that, no, we're not... We don't have, like, very strict plans or... Um, for what we want to happen next. Um, I think, again, we do want to see the construction of the Rosal Rail Yards like, pulled out on time. I think it's more about holding people accountable at the moment. Um, and we'd been having great chats with Rosal PNC, and I think we've always been you know, talking to them throughout the duration of the entire project because they've been there for all of it too. But, um, yeah, I, would, I think that is in our interest and we would love to see us connect more with... Um, the Western Harbour Tunnel Action Group and with Rosal PNC um, going forward. And our next thing is definitely getting um, deeper into talking to residents again about how soon this is. I think the urgency will start to strike you. Maybe it didn't four years ago, but now I think it will. So um, we don't have any concrete plans, but I can see that that's um, a good place to, to turn to, um, connecting with those groups and with those residents.